Today we're answering the question on every entrepreneur's mind. How can I make my content refreshing? I've been driving and hiking all over Sedona, Arizona for inspiration as I'm naming a traveling app and a sunscreen company. And I am inspired by Sedona's sun-drenched, arid climate and otherworldly dry red rock landscape to talk to you about being refreshing. No matter how you're branding, like if you're branding an accounting app or a wellness center or business mastery course, which I did last month, or your market has changed a little bit, your market has a tone, a voice, an attitude, a code of conduct, to some degree, a homogenization of presentation, which is basically a culture. So how can you be refreshing? Today, we're going to dive into the four branding refreshments. We're only ever buying our greater future from brands, ever. Think about it. Everything you bought this month was to create a greater future. For me, I had a weird week. <laughs> this week, I bought some yoga pants because my greater future is to do more yoga classes here in Sedona, feeling centered, feeling the spiritual energy here. I also bought a new convertible rooftop for my car because mine got knifed by a very unhappy person trying to steal my driving sweater that was stuffed like six inches behind my two-seater car. The greater future is pretty obvious there, right? Safe and rain-free drive from LA to Sedona. The funny thing is they didn't even get my sweater, or, or maybe they did. <laughs> they said, what is this, a kid size 12? I mean, logically thinking. If you're going to steal clothes from a car that is so small it can be easily mistaken for a roller skate, you might just suppose the statistical likelihood that those clothes inside fit more like for a character from The Muppet Show than for a Mr. and Mrs. Convertible car top slicer. What did you buy today? What did you buy this week? What greater future does it provide for you or your family? And what are they buying from you? And what greater future do you provide to them? If you can name that lickety split, you are going to love this episode. If you are struggling to name the greater future for your brand that it promises, our talk today will clear out those clouds for you and strengthen your branding. So let's dive in. The first of the four refreshments for your content, your resonance, your rhythm, your rap, your real voice. Can you name your resonance? Like that rhythm, the rap, that real voice that these brands can. Coca-Cola versus Mountain Dew. Pretty different, right? That resonance that they have, that voice. Similar, but not the same market. Certainly, you can see them on the same shelves or the same movie theater concessions, same soda machines across the country. But Coca-Cola speaks from a voice of sharing friendship, promising a future of happiness, harmony, good and wholesome, nostalgic, worthy times for friends. Like a perfect snapshot. And Mountain Dew speaks with a voice that resonates with, like, rebellion. They promise this future of, like, gaming and sports and living on the edge. Do the do. So what's your resonance, your point of view? Let's use the king and queens of conversation as example to get our brainstorm on. Are you innocently childlike and playful like Ellen DeGeneres or Jimmy Fallon? Are you spiritual and academic like Deepak Chopra? Are, is your brand sarcastic, like the commentator Chelsea Handler? Are you a caring, majestic feature, like Oprah Winfrey? Are you an abrasive pro provocateur? This one's always like such a killer way to go, but you really have to be that provocateur deep inside, like Howard Stern. He can take it as good as he gives it. Or are you like an enthusiastic cheerleader, like Rachel Ray or some other people you might know? Are you seeking the truth of a witness to life like Lisa Ling? Are you a catalyst for conflict like Jerry Springer? By now, you can see how unique each of these successful talk show folk have a resonance, a rhythm, a rap, a real voice unique unto themselves. Imagine if Deepak Chopra came out on the Oprah show and started talking like Jerry Springer. And imagine if Oprah started talking back to him with the sarcasm and cutting wit of Chelsea Handler. You would think you were being punked. <laughs> they would never do that. It's not who they are. It's not their resonance. What's yours? In the comments, share how you deserve your like rat-a-tat-tat, your rhythm, your one, two, three words. Share those in the comments below so that other people can be inspired by your unique voice as well. The second refresher is your relevancy. What strategy and tactics are you utilizing to stay relevant? In every market, there are resources for research, brand development. Can you name three of these resources? Could you use five? Is there one that no one else really knows about that you can draw a wealth of knowledge from to provide you with a very unique knowledge base? Let's say 
you're a digital marketer. You can stay relevant with resources like Kissmetrics. It's like one of the most diverse marketing blogs from like conversion rate optimization to social media usage. Buffer is another one of the most like data intensive digital marketing blogs out there. Content producers like myself use HubSpot for original marketing data to support our content, keep it fresh. Those are three of the industry's well-respected resources and thus how your competitors are staying relevant and up to date. Is there a resource that they haven't thought of? that you know. You're more resourceful than you think. Look into your past. I bet you have acres of knowledge, acres of diamonds, references and experiences that you can cross-pollinate with the industry's best data to make your relevancy refreshing. From your volunteer work in foreign countries to maybe an obsession with a species that regenerates their tails or the psychology of an addiction or maybe like me you've been testing the power of the phrase yes and through performing improv in Hollywood on Monday nights to a packed crowd for the last decade and have a wealth of knowledge to share on this catalytic power for connection. It's the ability to create great conversations and interviews or maybe you've been fascinated by the efficacy of eyewitness accounts like one of my clients and memory or the socioeconomic behind the determining the monetary value of fine art over time. When you see your quirks, your hobbies, your interests, your experiences as brandable resources, you can truly create a brand that is relevant and refreshing. Like here's how I geek. I love following Pantone for visual branding. It inspires me to create logos, social media campaigns, and branding artwork. My name is Kenan Wing, and I am a color nerd. <laughs> okay, so look into your hobbies and be proud of them. They can cross-pollinate with all of your market's usual resources to make your brand refreshing. Your third refresher is your relationships. Your relationships, your network can refresh your content. Ever heard the phrase, it's who you know? It is. How about this one? Ever heard that we become like the five people we have the most contact with in our daily lives? Who are your top five influences? Who's in your sphere? Is it a sphere of success? A sphere of fear? Is there anyone you'd like to add from your outer sphere into your inner sphere? Or anyone you'd like to subtract from your inner sphere to help it transform from a sphere of fear to a sphere of success? There's some sphere rhyming there for you. Ask yourself, who do I know? that I'd like to interview for my ideal individuals to help them step into their greater future. Let me like open up your mind a little bit more. Don't just look at the obvious choices or mentors or business associates. Ever see a comedian mimic their family members or neighbors? Margaret Cho imitating her family is ah, so hilarious. Made her a huge star. Mega talent and producer Tyler Perry plays Medea based on Perry's neighbor and his aunt. How many Medea movies have been made? How many millions of people Love those movies, brand loyalists now. It's usually the most emotional and thus the most memorable part of their content. We love real life. We love the real. We love present moment. We love relationships relating to each other's, not dictating to each other. Not just ones with celebrities and authority figures. We're communal beings. We're on this earth to relate to each other. Without relationships, our spirit dies. The cruelest punishment we have is solitary confinement. Share your relationships with your ideal individuals through your unique resonance. Now, if you're looking at your relationships and you're thinking to yourself, no one wants to hear wisdom from my crazy friends or my parents. They're nuts, uncontrollable, or they're so formal, or they're so fuddy-duddy. Think about this. Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart, as I am speaking this right now, have hit shows together. Miss and that's a good thing. And Mr. Mo Sizzle, Lo Bizzle, Bandizzle, Bo Bizzle, sorry about that snoop, <laughs> have a relationship people love to watch. And network executives and advisors love to invest in it too. Talk about a refreshing take on the talk show market. Talk about cross-pollinating resources and providing unique relationships. I'm inviting you to take the judgment glasses off and see your relationships as resources for refreshment to your content. But to do this, you must do what every brander must do all the time. You must see through your ideal individual's eyes, their heart. Your side hustles, personal life, hobbies, unique obsessions, interests may seem old or unrelated or since you purposely like kept them like boxed in from your or boxed away from your work life, but to your ideal individual, this is you blocking them off from your real life wisdoms, your rap, your rhythm, your point of view.
Share relationships, stories, hard truths, lessons that you flipped upside down, if that will serve them, even if it will embarrass you a little bit. So for me, speaking of embarrassment, uh, I wish I was cool enough to hang with the Snoop. I'm actually a very shy person around other people I don't know. No one believes me when I say this, but I constantly have to coach myself to seem extroverted in social situations, even though inside I'm like running for the walls, <laughs> like I was made of wallpaper. So I saw Snoop Dogg once in the lobby of my home in Hollywood and he smiled at me and I stared <laughs> as though I had, like I was in a total panic. I mean, at first I did like this triple take, like that can't be him, that can't be him, that can't be him. And he kept smiling at me. Uh, I kept getting more nervous and I get in my elevator and I'm my head down. I'm completely like bummed out by my complete utter uncoolness. But I finally look up and just as the elevator doors are closing, he says, baby girl, and all the way up, I die inside. Clearly, I missed my chance to become besties with the dog and interview him for you on the power of coining words. Oh my God, that would be killer. It would be a great episode and I blew it. I'm sorry. So I posted the social defeat on Facebook. And as one of my favorite speakers, Jim Quick of Superhero You, posts right back a picture of Jim chilling with Snoop Dogg. And he tells me not to be so shy. True, true. Or as Snoop would say, preach. Your fourth refreshment is your real story. Is there a theme today? Yeah, it's getting real. Real talk, real life, real resources, real life relationships, real embarrassing rides up an elevator. <laughs> and now for the superpower, when you put it all together, it's in your real story. Story is one of the 10 landmarks of branding. And I go into great detail on telling a compelling brand story inside of my How to Come Out of Nowhere course. I don't have time to go into it here, but I'll put a link in the description below. I do have time to talk to you about making your content refreshing, so let's stay on that. You are the most refreshing person on the planet. Did you know that? There's no one like you. In fact, your Eunice is priceless. It can't be bought. Let's say you've gone through my How to Come Out of Nowhere course and you've written your origin story. You've written your inspiration story, your case study story, your lesson learned story, and now you want to make it refreshing. You just add your Eunice to it, your emotion, your point of view, your vulnerabilities, your flaws, your strengths, your big why. Imagine Wizard of Oz without the Eunice. What if Dorothy wasn't homesick? What if she didn't need anyone because she wouldn't show her vulnerabilities? She would never have made friends along the way. Imagine if she didn't feel protective of her new friends, or even Toto. She wouldn't have thrown that bucket of water. She wouldn't have called the wizard out on keeping his promises to her friends. She wouldn't have gotten home. Go through your story. Strike out any language that isn't real talk. Then add your Eunice. Emotions, wishes, vulnerabilities, big whys. This is the key. Do not judge yourself. The more real you are, the more listeners can see their realness through you. This is how we connect. This is why we call moments of connection getting real with each other, right? Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has served you in, in creating a brand that isn't like every other, that is refreshing, that connects heart to heart with your ideal individuals, giving them permission to be real through the help of your products and services. What a great relationship that is. That's how you come out of nowhere and become an inspiration to millions. I post these videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so keep treating these as your masterclass in branding. Until next time, remember the golden rule. To love what you do and love how you do it. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on a single thing. Subscribe below. And here's something else I think you'll love.